you resigned from the government when you were 44 years old and then you've been serving Swami all these years. If you don't mind my asking, how does one sustain oneself uh, in service of God? I'm sure you have expenses and uh, uh, you have responsibilities. What sort of a discipline does it take to do what you have done? The requirements, if you look at it, you know, by staying here, are meager, I agree. Very minimal. And you don't have anything you have to really ask for. I mean, in my case, for instance, I have been given a place to stay, a work to do. And what else is there? And a very complying spouse, may I add. Yeah, that is, of course. That well, might have eased Maybe, the I think. I, I don't think it, it's compliant for my sake. She has also devotion to Swami, sure. which possibly she felt that the best way for her to show the devotion is to be with Swami. I, I, actually, the requirements within the ashram, if you're really having life in the ashram, seem to be very normal, nominal, min, I wouldn't say minimal, but certainly nominal. I mean, certain expenditure, yes, you may have beyond. I think in a way, even the so-called health expenditure, etc. I think Swami is taken care of. For many people, he is taking care of. For us also, I think you have a hospital which provides the thing. Firstly, I think he does it in such a way that you don't need to have the hospital. That's the highest thing that can happen. But should it become necessary to visit the hospital, the hospital can take care. And uh, if you do not have any need beyond what is necessary for your whatever passes off as basic necessities, I think it should be possible. And for a man, like a government servant who has it, uh, the, the government is always generous in its pension. It gives it and it's enough. And I didn't think too much of uh, what I'm going to do when I left the service, honestly. <laughs> I thought, uh, in a way, for my work, whatever is required, Swami had given. For my stay, whatever is required is given. So I don't think I ever felt the need of uh, having to have some other uh, support mechanism. What about ambition, personal ambition? Because had you stayed with the services, perhaps somebody yeah, of your is, cadre would have see, retired at a very senior level. It, yes. But see, there you can make a, what is your preference. You would like to do service what you consider to be a genuine service to Swami is a matter of choice. If you stayed on in one profession, in your service, what would have come out of it is uh, a matter also of uh, no certainty. We can aspire to be this, to be that. A many number of people would not have done anything beyond. How many people beyond their formal age of retirement would have really been able to get a chance to work in a manner which gives not only personal satisfaction but also something which would have really registered in the books of God that uh, you had been a humble servant. In that register, at least you are happy that you will find a name. What a privilege! to yeah. be enrolled so in that. So you say that, well, you open the book and you see your name is also included as a man who is not merely a wayfarer in the world but also a servant. 
in the process. Many of these things are non-material objects. Satisfaction is also non-material. Is a non-material. That is why. How do you define that? Or measure it? It is very difficult to define satisfaction. Today, do you feel satisfied with the life you have led? I think I have no reason to feel that I would have been happier anywhere else. I don't know. Since there is no comparisons, I can't say I would have been happy if I had got it, etc. But personally, I think I'm a very fulfilled person and i think to be able to do some work in the larger scheme of things of god at the age of 82 is something which is a is very difficult for me to not be happy about absolutely you <laughs> Understanding which I feel, I I don't think there is any comparison. Uh, people who had been with me, perhaps possibly, they might be happy in their own ways, and it's very difficult to compare the type of happiness, because happiness is a such a state of mind where it will be very difficult for people to say that I have been happier in this place or I have been happier in that place. But if it's you taking it as an absolute quality, I think it's one of the rare privileges that might have come your way to be with Swami himself personally till the age of seventy-five. My age of seventy-five, his age of eighty-five. Itself is a great blessing. Beyond that, to be given the privilege of being associated with his work, I think, is uh, a sign of great benediction. So all this, I think, are things which have been. Not secured by me, but given by Swami. I can't say I secured any of these things. This is just the sign of blessing. I think people become happy in many ways. I seem to be happy by doing what I've been doing. No fatigue, repeat uh, fatigue syndrome, repeat action fatigue. If that was so, Swami should have been the most fatigued person. Every day darshan, every day listen to people pleading for this and that. So if yes, I noticed that about Bhagwan, uh, like always new, always fresh. I think because it it is not a burden for him; it is an opportunity for him. To relieve the sufferings of people. For me, at least, it's a possibility of doing some work connected with his work. Sir, today, how do you nurture and maintain your connection with Swami, the Cosmic Swami? Are you a man of prayers? Do you follow a routine? You have the overarching faith that whatever is has to be done has to be done the way in which. You have been trained by him to do simple things like being extremely concerned about the use of resources. I mean, it, it, it is unalterable. Similarly, if you want to do anything, it must serve the larger purpose. For instance, if it's a question of a choice of equipment, let's say. What would you do? You would write 
the persons who are connected with that to give us an assessment. Now you have to go by certain judgment of certain people. And all that is necessary even today. But beyond that, you sort of do it in the ultimate hope that what is done will please Swami, will be in the interest of the larger number of people which you will approve. So I think it is a standard criteria that he had given you, you know, with reference to what will, can be done, can be pursued or should not be pursued. This is, I think, a question of trying to, to, to assess in the context of what he has been giving us guidelines, whether those, these things fit in with that. So that's about your work. Personally, your connect? Personally, I think it is to be without making any further claims that you are close to Swami because each is as close to Swami as one wishes. So nobody can say I am closer to Swami than the other because there is no such yardstick. The only yardstick which is that your own yardstick. If you feel, Swami has always said, I am as close as you think I am with you. If I feel that I am close to Swami, it is for me to feel so. But I can't say that I am closer than anyone else. So I think in so far as personal when you're touching feelings the are concerned, well, I think it is as strong as it has been so far as individual is concerned. How strong is it? Well, Swami alone can say that is strong or not strong enough. Mm -hmm. So we leave it. I mean, I, there is no way by which there is a, a third party approval in this. There is only one approval and we don't know what that type of approval is. It may not it is a silent one. So, I don't think anyone has any yardstick by which you can prove that, uh, mm -hmm. I, that you are doing the thing the way in which he wants. We can only hope that the objective criteria that had been laid down for the purpose of doing the work in consonance with the principles or objectives given. We can continue to follow that and to adhere to that. But that I think it's our responsibility. You read a lot, don't you, sir? You I stay read, on top of I latest read. trends. I won't say I read a lot, but there are a lot of people who must be reading much more than me. But somehow I have an interest in reading. I try to read the thing that catch my attention. It could be a novel, it could be something in my own subject which I meet, I've been formally trained. It could be a subject in which I'm not formally trained but I find a fascination. It, I read something which seemed to be giving, putting me in an exalted state of mind. Or I seem to read something which uh, gives me a sense of uh, the delight, let us say, in reading things which uh, give me a sense of upliftment. I sometimes soar with poetry. I come down with uh, the problem of trade war with America and China. <laughs> so there are things which are not easily sort of uh, compatible. They are not compatible in that sense of the term. But I think we live in multiple worlds and I think uh, and you I have been you. blessed with <laughs> being able to live in multiple worlds. And traverse to them with 
great ease because I notice one minute you speak of soaring with poetry into an exalted state of mind and next minute you're talking to Vignesh and saying get three, get a brand new lock for the storeroom with three keys and make sure X, Y and Z keeps a key each and it's all accounted for and then you're worrying about three phase electricity in the ashram. Then you're talking about uh, thought leadership, about the Satisai Center for Human Values. So you do traverse multiple worlds at multiple layers and levels. And yet you stay in that moment with that particular topic. Well, I, I don't know that I can claim, you know, versatility. But uh, the nature of the work, you know, moves from something which is uh, noble and exalted <laughs> to something which is very pedestrian. Yet important. So, when you talk of something like Center for Human Values, I think you are in contact with the, the source of all life. Right. Therefore, there is something which really makes it, you know, worthwhile and exalted. And you have to live, you know, in a world of uh, very ordinary things which uh, really become the very warp and woof of our life. I mean, you can't have safety <laughs> without a lock. And you can't possibly think in terms of preserving things without the ability to tell people kindly take care of it, etc. So I think it seems that your day-to-day uh, -day activities themselves move you know, from a state of very great noble feelings to something which is to be taken care of because uh, they constitute the, the ground on which you stay. You, you're staying on the ground, therefore you have to take care of it. And you really, if, it, if it can really, for the day you can soar and be happy with something, which lifts you up, so be it. Not that you seek as uh, an escape route. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that. It is, you are happy in that frame of mind. You are not unhappy in this frame of mind. This has to be done. That need not be done, but if you do it, you have a certain sense of great joy. There is something like an obligation to do certain things. There is something like a choice that you have to do or you can do. So I move from, I think, on a daily basis, from certain choices to certain um, obligations. So I, that's how so obligation is something which I don't consider as a, an imposition on me. Choosing something which gives you a joy, uh, I think uh, if it is available for the day, it's good. But I try, because poetry gives me a great joy, at least I try to read, if it's possible, 50 to 100 lines. Something that is nothing favorite? connected with my life today, which but something which gives my, my spirit, you know, something to really leap for joy. So that is the type of thing. Mm -hmm. Who did you read recently? I still continue to read Sri Aurobindo, apart from the poets of the Western poets only. Unfortunately, I have not trained, I have not been trained in Sanskrit in a classical sense, so I can't read a, Kalidasa and uh, appreciate his uh, Upamana Upameya. I can read it only through English what he has done, but not in Sanskrit itself. That is where I think I may have a, a limitation. I wish I had, uh, had the opportunity to do something in language like Sanskrit, which would have given greater opportunities to be even better trained or a better 
quote unquote educated which i think somehow we did not come our way but looking back now i find yes i think some formal training in a great language as sanskrit would have been of great benefit count your blessings always it could have been you know it would have been a wonderful time given by swami to be with him to be here and uh, i don't think i could have chosen any other place uh, to be with than to be with swami yes i think uh, work here was i personally believe the incidental he gave me a chance to be with him to work but i think the primary reason was to be in his presence and that was far more important than being a registrar or a secretary of the trust there was something to be done therefore it was given but i think all that was uh, i would say an excuse but certainly i think it was uh, an aid let us say to be with him after all he has to make me something in order to be with him so that way i think it helped but if it was not one it would have been the other after all a lot of people have been given a lot of work by swami not because we are all extremely competent at that but because of his grace all right that lord needs some place to be stay so let him be here i always consider that it was more a question of his generosity than being our competence it is very it is indefinable you know how you really find you are place in the vast scheme of things which he represents a cog in the wheel and shall we say very inconspicuous dot the whole universe but that was made special that dot was made special to feel consequential because of your association with swami that i think is important in other respect it might be inconsequential but it could have been anything but you are in a place in which you found reason to be associated with something the dimension of which you have no concept at all such a vast thing being made into a very identifiable figure and you have a contact with that figure which represents certain vastness those are things which are very difficult to express there is a great sense of inward joy some secret fulfillment as what swami represents